After hiking over 1,500 miles with the Junction backpack from Hyperlite Mountain Gear, I thought you might like to hear about my impressions and how it's holding up. Hey guys, I'm Dan from Shasta Bubba Adventures, and this is my long-term review of the Junction backpack. First, the stats. The Junction weighs 32 ounces and has an internal capacity of 55 liters. External pockets add another 9.8 liters according to the HMG website. It's called the Junction because it's a blend of two earlier styles, the Southwest, which had these solid pockets all the way around, and the Wind Rider with all mesh pockets. The Junction has solid pockets on the side so they don't get caught on brush, and mesh in the front pocket, which personally I really like because it's easy to see where things are in here, and I use this pocket a ton. My pack is so old, it actually has the previous logo, and it was a special order item because they weren't offering the Junction style at that time. My guess is that so many people requested this as a special order, the company paid attention and began offering it as a standard option. And another point from ancient history, when my pack was made, HMG wasn't installing hip belt pockets. The assumption being that some ultralighters just didn't want them, just like Z-Pack still does. So these are from Zimmerbilt and they work great. I highly recommend Zimmerbilt if you need hip belt pockets, but you don't have to worry about that because HMG figured out that most backpackers do want hip belt pockets. So now the junction comes with those pockets sewn on. Support is provided by two aluminum stays that are removable and can be shaped to your individual back and a one quarter inch foam back panel. Now at first glance, I was afraid that this back panel would cause me to sweat a ton, but in actual use, I found that I sweat about the same as with my Z-Packs Arc Blast, even though that pack has that trampoline mesh back. The website claims that this pack is comfortable carrying up to 40 pounds. I call that an exaggeration. I've often had the weight up to 35 pounds at the beginning of a week long trip, and it's okay, although I'm happier after a few days when some of the food is gone and the weight goes down below 30 pounds. I'd say the sweet spot for this pack is right around 25 plus or minus a few pounds, and I've been very happy with the carrying ability of this pack at that weight. Now the shoulder straps are made of 3 8 inch closed cell foam and spacer mesh. And if you're used to the appearance of traditional packs, it might seem that there just isn't anywhere in, enough width or padding there, but it does its job well, and I rarely experience shoulder pain from carrying a normal load. There are no load lifters up top, you can see, which hasn't been a problem for me, and I've learned that most load lifters on ultralight packs don't actually work the way they're supposed to because of where they're attached they usually just cinch the pack forward instead of actually lifting it up off the shoulders. You might notice that it's missing the sternum strap. That's because I remove those from all of my packs. I find that the sternum strap actually causes shoulder pain when it holds the shoulder straps in the wrong position. The sternum strap seems to hold the shoulder straps just so they cut into the side of that muscle. So I've been much happier without that strap and letting the shoulder straps just ride a little more naturally, a little farther out on the shoulders. Also, <laughs> it's nice to have only one buckle to undo when I'm dead tired at the end of the day and wanna drop the pack. One big question people have is whether it's really waterproof. HMG is rather cagey on the website by stating correctly that it's made from waterproof materials, but then they add that if you pair this pack with their DCF stuff sacks, you will have a quote, nearly waterproof kit. I think what all that legalese is about is that this pack is just not an actual dry bag, meaning you can't load it up and hold it underwater for a few minutes and expect no water to get in. So they can't flat out claim that it's waterproof. But here's the deal. It's made from DCF, formerly known as Cuban fiber, which is waterproof. The seams are taped and sealed so they're waterproof too but there's always gonna be little gaps like the opening where you thread a hose for a water bladder through. 
not to mention the impact of things like operator error, <laughs> like opening the main body of your pack to get your rain shell out when it's already raining because I forgot to put the rain shell in the front pocket before the storm. So the answer to the question of whether it's waterproof is mostly. Over the last seven years, I've hiked in some very bad weather, including day-long downpours, and I trust this pack to keep my gear dry enough to never consider having to mess with a pack cover, which is great not to have to worry about that extra weight or hassle. On the other hand, my quilt is always in the bottom of the pack and I do keep it in a waterproof DCF stuff sack because it would be a big deal if it got wet. And I have, on rare occasions, found just about a teaspoon of water that somehow got into the pack. Probably 95% of the time my gear stays completely dry inside, but I just feel more secure with that little bit of extra insurance protecting my down quilt in the bottom of the pack. As far as the pack volume goes, if I never did any trips longer than, say, three nights, I probably would prefer the 2400 size. It's really plenty of room for most weekend warriors if you're using typical ultralight gear, and the harness and carrying system is exactly the same as on the 3400. On the other hand, you only save two ounces and $35 with the 2400. So if you're like me and want the flexibility of going on longer trips, the 3400 is more versatile and the top just rolls down farther to use up the extra space when it's not needed. I usually carry my shelter inside the pack just because I can and I strap the shelter on top when the pack is full of a week's worth of food. And speaking of the top strap, it's a V strap which holds things securely and there's a huge range of adjustability there to handle bulkier items too like winter gear or a bear canister. The HMG Junction, Windrider, and Southwest are all basically the same pack and are universally positively reviewed not to mention becoming one of the most popular ultralight packs on the trail. One criticism I've seen is that the side strap cuts across the top of the side pocket and some folks thought that reduced the usefulness of that pocket. For me that has never been a problem and I've actually found that strap to be well located to hold secure longer items like my tripod, trekking poles, or a Tenkara rod. Now I did cut off the straps that go around the side pockets because they weren't useful for me and they get in the way of sliding the water bottles into the pocket. I've also read the opinion that DCF is a great material for shelters but not durable enough for packs. Well, I'm here to tell you it's plenty durable. I'm not overly rough with my gear but I don't baby it either and this pack is still going strong with no holes seams pulling apart or even wear spots that I can see. After years of hard use I can testify that the material is tough as nails. I haven't washed this pack because I wanted you to see the reality of both how much it's been used and also the downside that the white material does show the dirt. You can get the junction in black now which hides the dirt better and is a slightly thicker DCF adding about two and a half ounces in weight and even more durability. One other thing I wanted to share with you is how I use the front pocket because for me that's key to this pack working well on the trail. If you're used to using a traditional backpack with a big lid or brain pocket, you might wonder how you can possibly get by without it. Well, I just transferred everything that used, I used to carry in the lid to the mesh pocket and use DCF stuff sacks. So here I have my ditty bag and on top of that goes my food bag with everything I plan to eat during the day. The main food bag stays inside the pack. On the right side goes the SteriPen so I know where to reach for it when I need it. And then I'll also typically carry a few other things like the legs of my zip-off pants and my wind shirt so they are handy if the wind picks up or the mosquitoes are really bad. I don't use the mesh pocket to dry things like the website suggests because, quite frankly, nothing dries all balled up in there. Instead, anything wet just gets tied on with the overhead straps and that works much better to dry things. By the way, you can see that the mesh has held up well to years of use with no holes or snags or fuzziness and it's really amazing how much gear can be stuffed in that space when you really need to. Some folks complain about the cost of the junction, but it's the same as the Arc Blast from Z-Packs, but with better carrying ability in my opinion. 
And if you went with something cheaper like the ULA circuit or ohm, by the time you add waterproof materials, it's the same price too, not to mention being heavier. To me, it's been worth the investment for the use of a great all-around pack for many years. And here's hoping for many more years of great backpacking with the Junction Pack. Hey, thanks so much to all of you who have hit the subscriber button. I really appreciate it. Your support is really what keeps me going. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.